What this does is approach to topology, where it no longer is just a historical one, but, but where it is at one and the same time also a vertical one, and where they therefore co in here, as it were, where they're sacramentally connected. One implication of that is that the distinction sometimes made between topology and allegory essentially falls away. For topology isn't just a historical link any longer, according to Pusey. And <coughs> from my understanding, at least of the Church Fathers, Pusey is simply following patristic exegesis here. For to the Church Fathers as well, topology and allegory were one and the same thing. Why? Because the archetype of topology is at one and the same time the reality of allegorical exegesis. So what patristic allegory at least does is it doesn't just try to import something alien onto the historical realities, although that can of course be done, but that's not what patristic exegesis is about. What patristic exegesis tries to do is it takes Christ, the risen Lord, as a starting point, and it now asks the question, where do I see him already present in the old? Allegory, therefore, speaking other than literally, right? Allegory is indeed speaking other than, but other only in the sense that the reality is always already present in. It is therefore Christological exegesis at heart. Was it influenced by Philonic exegesis? Was it influenced by Platonism? All of that? Absolutely, absolutely. But the question is what drove it and also what shaped it. And what motivated it, what drove it, what shaped it, is the newness, as the Lubbock often puts it, it's the newness of the Christ event. The Church Fathers always wanted to interpret scripture the Old Testament, the way that the New Testament itself interpreted Scripture. So to them, um, it was not just the content, but it was also the mode of exegesis that was dictated by Scripture. And it seems to me that that takes um, Scripture seriously in a way that modern, strictly historical exegesis cannot do. 